Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to BSV TV. I'm your host, Sir Toshi, and on this show, we'll be defending the one and only truly genuine Bitcoin. The Bitcoin that Satoshi Nakamoto designed in his white paper as a peer to peer electronic cash system for the world. Let's get the disclaimers out of the way. So all the statements that you hear on this show are opinion and must only ever be taken as opinion. They are never to be taken as any form of advice, family, financial, sexual or otherwise. And on that note, let's sit back, relax, have some fun and enjoy the show. Get paid for your content in Bitcoin and set your own fee on Streamanity. Yeah, I'm not surprised. I wasn't asked why I'm convinced. Craig is Satoshi. Um, I posted on, on Reddit, he signed in my presence uh, the private, using the private key from block one, block number one, the very first mined Bitcoin block uh, on a computer that I'm convinced had not been tampered with, on software I'm convinced that had not been tampered with, a message of my choosing. At Enchain, we've just funded a number of universities doing, so far, a test up to one gigabyte because it validates what we've already done independently. We've tested up to 380 gigabyte blocks. We have tested 1 million transactions a second and transaction sizes up to 20 megabytes. Super complex scripts, basically ones that can run operating systems. That's all of global commerce times about 50. On top of that, we can have complex scripts. On top of that, we can scale each of those transactions 1000 times, which effectively means about a billion transactions per second, which means we can then have all derivatives, all complex trades. That means high frequency trading. It means everything that happens globally. Is the market that effectively BSV is going for, is that global e-commerce, which is currently valued at $29 trillion? No, that's too small. Buy and sell Bitcoin instantly at bsvgravity.com. And you can now book and pay for your winter holiday at skibsv.com. Alrighty people, good afternoon. Uh, today's day is Wednesday, the 23rd of June, 2021. Welcome to a bit of welcome to Satoshi TV, AKA Bitcoin SV TV, just really Bitcoin TV because Bitcoin is BSV. So uh, you'll have to excuse my voice. I can feel it going again probably because I've been talking too much. So <clears throat> just want to get through the show and have some fun. So this is doing the rounds at the moment. Lots of other, you know, um, shitcoin media outlets reporting on this. Check this out. South Africa BTC scam AfriCrypt makes off with $3.8 billion. Uh, uh, asks victims not to report <laughs> as if Oh my God, what is this? More shenanigans. Um, South, Africa, South African investors are still in shock after a digital currency scam reportedly made off with 54 billion rand, which is $3.8 billion, and blamed it on a hack. AfriCrypt was, um, was around for two years, but in that time it, it had allegedly lured investment from high net worth individuals and celebrities. Once it claimed it had been hacked, the company allegedly urged its investors not to report um, as authorities would uh, frustrate recovery funds. <laughs> that's hilarious. Honestly, the stories that these shysters come out with, that's hilarious. Don't report the hack because it will frustrate the recovery efforts. Oh my god, I've lit... I've, you know, every day you think you've heard it all and then you hear something else and it's just like, wow, you know, just the audacity amazes me. The South African digital currency industry has barely recovered from the damage that the Mirror Trading International inflicted on its investors. Uh, Mirror Trading International was a multi-level marketing scam that made off with close to a billion dollars for over 260,000 investors. It had grown beyond South Africa with Texas and Canadian regulators declaring it illegal in their jurisdictions. AfriCrypt is even bigger and, uh, and more daring, according to a report by local outlet MoneyWeb. The company was set up in 2019 by Rees and uh, an Emir uh, Kaji and form, um, uh, the former being the uh, CEO, Rees, 21, 21 years old. Good, good. No wonder they made off with uh, 
3.8 billion dollars i mean 21 years old what does he know about life he's just like there's three billion dollars i'll say that see you later good grief uh described his how described himself as a somewhat of a, a digital currency guru yeah well, why wouldn't i good grief uh in one of the pitches to investors he claimed to have first heard about btc back in 2009 <laughs> Yeah, when he was only eight years old while watching the news with his father and being hooked since. Oh my goodness me. Ray Ease also claimed to uh, have started mining ETH while still in school. Oh, and people believe this crap. And developing his own uh, artificial intelligence powered trading algorithm. Yeah, here we go. Bot algorithm. It was the dynamic and innovative trading system that has fueled AfriCrypt's astronomical growth from a one-man operation uh, running out of a bedroom to one of Africa's largest and most successful AI trading companies in only a few years, he reportedly reportedly told investors. I mean, this is this is like BitConnect and um, oh crikey, what US was it? uh usit whatever it was the other one yeah it's all yeah it's all trading bots um oh usi tech yeah that was that was the other ponzi scheme that ran alongside of bitconnect oh my god uh afrycrypt targeted high net worth individuals and celebrities according to reports as with any other scam it promised ludicrous returns at times claiming it could offer 10 percent daily returns the company was also adept at targeting its victims um that most of its investors treated like uh, treated it like their own secret path to a uh, world of unlimited wealth. It was this target market um, uh, that uh, Africrypt used to reach out to other wealthy investors in the inner circles. Oh my goodness me, no way! Many clients invested upwards of uh, 1.5 million rand, which is 105 thousand um, dollars, uh, with some going as high as uh, 1.4 million dollars. Honestly, and they believe this crap. Shame on them. Shame on them. Uh, in April 2021, the executives issued a statement via email to their clients informing them that AfriCrypt had been hacked. Surprise, surprise. The, bre- uh, the breach had affected client accounts, they said, uh, and they were trying to retrieve the stolen funds. Uh, our number one priority is retrieving the funds as speedily as possible. However, this process is very wary and will take a substantial amount of time to complete. If successful, they said, yeah, because they want to do a runner with it. However, the most curious part of the email was uh, when they asked the clients not to report the matter to authorities. <laughs> we urge all clients to please be patient as we attempt to resolve the situation at hand. It is uh, understandable that the clients may proceed the legal route, but we ask clients to please acknowledge that this will only delay the recovery process. Oh my God. Uh, according to Hannah Cor McCurney's uh, attorneys, the firm representing the victims, the two founders took off into the UK within days of the uh, supposed hack. They have also allegedly taken down the website and disconnected all contact, including their phone numbers. Uh, Hayacom said that most uh, that most of the BTC was transferred to BTC tumblers and mixers, making it almost impossible to trace. The law firm uh, also revealed that the scammers were reckless enough to drain the investor funds into some of the wallets which they had been uh, using while operating the scam, and yet claimed to be hacked. The Cape Town-based firm remarked. Uh, our further analysis of the blockchain links the flow of cryptocurrency transactions to certain large local exchanges. We trust that these exchanges will be open to disclosing information relating to wallets used by AfriCrypt or their proxies. Good grief, and this is all part of the uh, the CoinGeek Crypto Crime Cartel series. Never a dull moment in crypto. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, jeepers. Jeepers. Uh, I mean, just honestly, audacity. Let's have a look at this one. World Bank denies report to El Salvador for making BTC legal tender. No surprise there, really. So the World Bank has denied requests for support uh, for support from El Salvador to help with the implementation of BTC as legal tender in the country, citing concerns over the transparency of the dig- digital currency and its impact on the environment. Oh, dear. A spokesman for the uh, World Bank was quoted by Reuters as saying, there are too many shortcomings in BTC for this to be something they would be willing to assist with in implementation. A quote here, we are uh, committed to helping El Salvador in numerous ways, uh, including for uh, currency transparency and regulatory processes. 
While the government did approach us for assistance on Bitcoin, that's CoreCoin BTC, this is not something that the World Bank can support given the environmental and transparency shortcomings and the fact that the World Bank is supported by the US dollar. <laughs> It comes after El Salvadorian um, finance minister um, Ale Gerano uh, Zelaya um, said the country had asked the World Bank for its help on the technical side of the impl of uh, implementing the digital currency as legal tender, as it looks to uh, use BTC in parallel to the US dollar as domestic currency. Dole. The minister also noted that decisions with the um, International Monetary Fund had been uh, productive despite the IMS raising its own concerns about the macroeconomic, financial and legal issues, yeah, because it doesn't involve the US dollar, uh, involved in using BTC as a formal currency within the country. You can't use it anyway, not many use it, store of value, remember? Uh, El Salvadorian, uh, El Salvadorian debt has recently been increased in price with investors worried about the term of the uh, International Monetary Fund plan designed to fill in budget gaps through to 2023. Uh, Siobhan Morden, head of Latin American Fixed Income Strategy at Amherst uh, Pierpoint Securities, said there were still some concerns about whether the plan to implement BTC would even be feasible for El Salvador. There is no fast track for a solution on an uh, international monetary fund program and even uncertainty on whether the uh, core coin proposal is compatible with diplomatic US or uh, multilateral relations. Yeah, they're not going to have relations if a company, if a company, if a com country starts using core coin, are they? Uh, it comes after El Salvador announced it would become the first country in the world to make a BTC legal tender, noting the um, uh, potential benefits of using digital currency for remittances from citizens overseas. Dear, oh dear, absolutely clueless. Absolutely clueless. I mean, how, how anybody can not see that BTC is literally absolutely useless is beyond me. I just don't understand, like, how stupid have you got to be, you know, to see that they purposely effed it up so that you can't use it. It's absolutely insane. But, um, yeah, dear, oh dear. Fun and games, never a dull moment in crypto. Wouldn't be enjoying myself so much if there wasn't so much hoo-ha and all that uh, just ridiculous stuff, you know, honestly. Uh, so I think that's uh, I think that's Coin Geek done. Oh uh, yeah, um, Pace View gives uh, popular relic creators more chances to earn money. Um, yeah, again, quite enjoying the development of uh, of relic. That's pretty cool. Let's have a look at this one. Spanish court rules John McAfee can be extradited to the United States. Oh dear, oh dear. Uh, McAfee's lawyers will have the opportunity to appeal the court's decision <clears throat> and local lawmakers will need to approve it before he can be extradited. Oh dear. John McAfee, founder of the antivirus software company of the same name, is one step closer to facing prosecution in the United States for tax evasion. In a ruling released on Wednesday, the Spanish National Court approved the extradition of McAfee to the United States. His legal team will have the opportunity to appeal the court's decision. In addition, Spain's Council of Ministers will need to approve the extradition uh, before it is final. The US government had been uh, seeking McAfee's extradition for charges including failing to submit tax returns for uh, 2014 to 2018 and allegedly not reporting income from uh, promoting cryptocurrencies, consulting work, speaking engagements and selling the rights to his life story for a documentary. <clears throat> However, the Spanish court ruling only refers to charges from tax evasion from 2016 to 2018. McAfee has previously argued that the charges from the US officials are politically motivated, given um, he said he would target the IRS and its corruption as a Libertarian Party candidate in the US elections. If convicted and given the maximum sentence, the tax evasion charges could place a 75-year-old in prison for the rest of his life. Oof. The computer programmer once had an estimated net worth of more than $100 million dollars largely stemming from his antivirus software company. However, he claimed last week he no longer holds any crypto, um, as it has uh, dissolved through the many hands of Team McAfee or otherwise been seized by authorities. McAfee has been uh, detained in Spain since October 2020 after his arrest at Barcelona's International Airport. However, he um, still has access to Twitter and regularly posts on his condition and thoughts on the legality of his situation. Because he's got nothing there to do, clearly. Um, 
So B Crash News has said uh, billionaire Steve Cohen says, I'm doing a deep dive into crypto. I'm fully converted. I'm not missing this. Oh dear, oh dear. Billionaire investor and CEO of Point72 Asset Management, Steve Cohen, says he's taking a deep dive into cryptocurrency, emphasizing that he's fully converted, the billionaire said. I'm not going to miss this. I already feel like I've missed the first part of it. Oh dear, oh dear, dear. See, look, it just goes to show you all the gear and no idea. He's a billionaire, you know, and even with all those resources at his disposal, he still hasn't figured out what Bitcoin is. How crazy is this? You know, I'm not a billionaire and I managed to figure it out. <laughs> uh, but mind you, I had to like lose all my money to figure out really that extra little bit of motivation to do all the digging. Shout out KP Dad, good to see you. Uh, so Steve Cohen gets into crypto, says he's fully converted. Steve Cohen is the chairman, CEO and president of Point72, an asset management firm with approximately $22.1 billion in assets under management. As of April 1st, um, the firm has 12 offices around the globe and more than 1,650 employees. Uh, he shared his view on cryptocurrency in an interview last week, emphasizing that he has finally decided that he's got to get into the game. The billionaire CEO said, I'm doing a deep dive into crypto. I'm fully converted. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Shit coining. <laughs> Shit coining. Like, it really, it, it just blows my mind. It really doesn't take a lot to figure it out. Like, honestly, really, it doesn't. You know, listen to my show. I'll explain it. That's pretty much it, you know. Good grief. Uh, check this out. <laughs> He's not a Dogecoin millionaire because he didn't sell. Uh, another Dogecoin douchebag. The price of Dogecoin continues to sink down 40% in the last seven days. In brief, um, Glauber Contesoto um, put all his money into Dogecoin. His holdings went up uh, in value and touched $2 million, but the volatile meme coin has since dipped and he's no longer a Dogecoin millionaire. <laughs> That's kind of funny, isn't it? Like, it's like Slumdog Millionaire, Doge, Dogecoin Millionaire. Uh, Glober uh, put everything he had into Dogecoin, a highly volatile cryptocurrency that was originally invented as a joke. He rode that investment to a, a millionaire status and a profile in New York Times in May. Then came the crash. Uh, at 23, he invested in Dogecoin last February, according to the New York Times report. The investor used all of his savings and credit card debt to invest 250000 So his 4x debt, basically. I mean, it's not like he's like 100x debt, dear oh dear, in the cryptocurrency. Last month, his holdings touched $2 million. In a, uh, in a tweet in, in April, he claimed to be the first Dogecoin millionaire uh, of, two, of 2021. Yeah, not quite, mate. I'm sure other people uh, you know, have made millions from that. Um, but despite the surge in the value of the coin rising more than 12,000% from January to its peak in May, uh, he didn't cash out. Now the price of the meme coin has dropped dramatically along with the rest of the market. Today, Dogecoin was trading at uh, uh, 19 cents, 40 percent a decline in value from last week. Uh, and this guy, Costas, Contes Otto, Contes Otto, uh, who has tens of thousands of followers on Instagram and Twitter, today tweeted that his Dogecoin investment stood at 764,000. Dear oh dear, goes if I can hodl, um, uh, you can hodl. Oh my god! I mean, you know. He thinks that he's right, you know, because numbers gone up and they think they're really smart because he's making loads of money. Oh, well, I knew Dogecoin would do this. You know, I've made this bet based on X, Y, and Z, and, uh, and that's why it's come off. They have no clue. And, like, why would you, why would you sell when you, think you, when you think you're absolutely amazing and everything's, you know, and everything's gone well for you? But it's gambling. You know, it's like you put everything on red. You know, and red came in, and then because it came in again, you just think it's going to keep going for you. You know, a winning streak. I mean, he knows that it's gambling because there's no sense in what he's done. There's no fun. There's no fundamental value in Dogecoin whatsoever. It's an absolute punt. You know, jeepers! Thousands liked and repost uh, and responded to the investor's tweet, with some uh, reminding him that he is uh, no longer a millionaire. Um, that uh, he could have uh, sniped back by. Um, uh, reminding them he split up 3x on his investment, or he's still up 3x on his investment. 
Um, Conte Soto, who uh, works out the Los Angeles hip hop media company, according to the New York Times, said in his tweet that he will continue to hodl. Oh my god, a personal misspelling of the word hold. Oh my god. Uh, I mean, we we know where this is going, you know. I uh, just, I mean, they're, they're literally, I can't understand how they don't see the fundamentals of what they're doing, you know. Well, maybe I can. I mean, you know, they're gonna fight, they're gonna learn the hard way, like really hard, jeepers. And uh, check this one out. So this is the latest warning from the FCA in Britain. So I mean, the number of times they put warnings out, you know. Um, we, we know what's coming. Uh, Britain continues uh, crypto curbs with warnings over unregistered firms. A financial watchdog in the UK. Financial watchdog? It's the FCA. <laughs> uh, has issued warnings over unregulated crypto companies claiming that they pose a threat to its financial system. Well, not necessarily the financial system, but uh, to citizens because they know that, well, the FCA know they're going to be getting in the neck. They're like, why didn't you tell us this was a load of crap? Well, we did try to warn you it was a load of crap. Did you listen? No. <laughs> um, the United Kingdom appears to be uh, operating in the same light as the uh, US with regard to its stance on cryptocurrencies. Further warnings and banking clampdown, clampdowns have occurred. This, um, The latest coming from the Financial Conduct Authority. The FCA Head of Enforcement and Market Oversight, Mark Stewart, um, yes, Stu Stewart, uh, issues the warning at a, uh, a weekly virtual summit, stating that these crypto companies were high risk, volatile and unregulated. He declared that there were 111 of them operating in Britain without necessary regulating, uh, without necessary regulation, according to Reuters. Cryptocurrency cracked down. The financial watchdog is clearly concerned about crypto, uh, crypto companies working in the UK, banks and payment services. A quote here, they said, We have a number of firms that are clearly doing business in the UK without being registered with us and they are, um, dealing, with, and they are dealing with someone, banks, payment service firms, <coughs> consumers. This is a very real risk, um, so we are worried about that. Since January, businesses dealing with digital assets have had to uh, obtain a full FCA registration before they can begin trading. According to Stewart, very few have, um, very few have, which pose a sig oh, um, very few have, which pose a significant financial crime risk. Just like in the US, the UK seems more concerned with money laundering and crime than uh, regular citizens trading or investing in cryptocurrencies. However, Stewart went on to uh, reiterate the um, tired old argument that came out during the previous bull run market, crypto is a bubble. And quotes here, the reason many are investing now is because they have a fear of missing out on what might be a boom. Leaving aside how volatile these instruments actually are, um, it has tulip mania written all over it. Uh, Brits want their uh, cool coin, an estimated 2.5 million or 3.6% uh, of the UK population hold crypto assets, according to a report a number that has surged during the pandemic in, uh, induced lockdowns. Right, now we've got figures here. That's interesting. Didn't know that. 3.6% of the UK population. Wow. Wow. Uh, a recent FCA survey revealed that about half of cryptocurrency holders in the UK plan to increase their exposure, trusting that uh, they'll make money at some point. That's because they're listening to all these crypto shitcoin influencers. It added that the average investment... Uh, which went from £260 to £300, that's like $400 in one year, equates to around £1 trillion in the portfolios of small retailers, uh, retail investors in Britain. Jeepers. Jeepers. Uh, really a trillion dollars in all these shit coins. I thought the entire, what's the market, what's the entire market cap? Let's have a look. Of the entire market cap. Uh, so a market cap is only uh, like well, let's say uh, a trillion, a trillion pounds. That's the entire market. Mm. So for our friends across the pond, look at USD. There we go. So uh, the the entire market cap is only one point three trillion. And a uh, core coins market cap is a uh, 630 billion. So maybe that figure is a little bit wrong. 
But uh, anyway, that goes to around one trillion pounds. That's uh, one trillion pounds is about 1.3 trillion dollars uh, of the portfolios of small retail investors in Britain. Unsurprisingly, Britain's banks and regulators are not so uh, um, um, enamoured. On June 20th, Crypto Potato that, uh, reported that the leading UK bank, TSB, had taken action to prevent its customers from interacting with crypto exchanges such as Binance. You know, watch this space, people. Plenty of more shenanigans to come. You know, um, yeah, I've been through all these uh, articles today that I found quite entertaining. So uh, that'll do for today. Uh, 25 minutes gone. Shout out to people in the chat box. Put your handles and pay mails in there. Let's do this. There we go. KP Dad. Excellent. Swiping to send. Got it. There we go. Uh, Arcade Rob, put yours in there. Put yours in there. I can't remember what yours... You didn't put yours in there yesterday. I can't remember what it was. Um, orange kick. Thank you. Swiping to send. On the way. Lovely jubbly. Uh, Mad Dane, that was it. Ah, oh, Spy Pikes, that was it. That was it. There we go. Swiping to send. And uh, Madame, there we go on the way. Madame. There we go. Swiping to send on the way. There we go, done it, nice one. All right then guys, hope you enjoyed the show. Remember, stay tuned, never a dull moment in crypto. Always uh, love doing my uh, my chart show in the mornings and then uh, live at five later on. And then any other projects I'm involved in, like you know, women in BSV and all this kind of stuff, you know, very much looking forward to the future. So until then, catch you guys later. Get paid for posting your pics on Relica. Download the app now at www getrelica.com get your tweet etched on twitch forever on the bitcoin blockchain do it today at www.jointwitch.com buy bsv.live the best place to buy bitcoin sv online support independent content creators on micro payment platforms such as streamanity twitch and relica we should profit from our data, not the large corporations who track, monitor and sell it. If you enjoy the Bitcoin content that I produce, please support me by heading over to www.satoshi.tv where you can keep up to date with all the latest news, gossip and content as it's created. Thanks very much. To get started in Bitcoin, go to freebsv.com where you can claim your free Bitcoin. Then head over to Twitter and follow at IamZatoshi, where you can take part in his very generous and world-famous free giveaways. The future of advertising meets the power of Bitcoin at Tonic Pow. Get paid for posting advertising campaigns to your social media profiles. Go to www.tonicpowadds.com.